This is an AANEM tensionable moment focusing on muscle disease. This is a case of a 60 year old man presenting with several years of progressive weakness. He first noticed his left knee giving out when he would walk long distances, but over the past year, he's also having trouble with his left hand with some weakness and notes occasional choking on solids. He has not had any pain or paresthesias. On examination, he does have to use his arms to push up from a chair. He has some atrophy of the quadriceps, which is more pronounced on the left. He has mild diffuse weakness with more noticeable weakness in the left quadriceps, ankle dorsiflexes, finger flexes, and thumb flexes. He does not have any facial weakness or scapular winging. He has normal sensation and reflexes and no fasciculations were seen. On his nerve conduction studies, he had low amplitude C-maps in the lower limb with a normal sural sensory response and in the upper limb, his ulnar motor C-map was a little bit low with a normal median sensory response. Repetitive stimulation at a frequency of two hertz was done on the ulnar motor and there was no decrement at rest and no increment seen after 10 seconds of exercise. His needle EMG showed abnormalities in multiple muscles, including the gastrocnemius, tibialis anterior, vastus, rectus femoris, flex digitorum fundus, deltoid, and biceps brachii. Those abnormalities were slow firing fibrillation potentials and abnormal motor unit potentials that were rapidly recruited, short duration, complex for the most part, but there were some large complex motor units seen in a few muscles. This is the ultrasound that was done of his left forearm and you can see he has a very normal appearing flexor carpi ulnaris with normal echo intensity but he has very markedly increased echo intensity of the underlying flexor digitorum profundus. So the final diagnosis in this case, based on the EMG and supported by the ultrasound, is a chronic myopathy. Given his clinical presentation, as well as those ultrasound findings, which are fairly pathognomonic, and the mixed populations of small and large motor unit potentials, inclusion body myositis should be high on the differential diagnosis. So some clinical pearls to take away from this case are that ultrasound can help you with the examination by identifying increased echo intensity. It can provide a pattern of muscle involvement in addition to your clinical exam findings that may narrow your differential diagnosis, but it also may allow you to find more changes on needle EMG by targeting affected muscles. Needle EMG in myopathies, you need to make sure if that's in the differential diagnosis that you don't move too fast when looking at spontaneous activity. You may miss those slow firing fibrillation potentials if you move too quickly. Chronic myopathies can show these mixed populations of small and large motor unit potentials. Um, and that, that can be very challenging EMG studies. Your, your initial thought is that it's a neurogenic process because you see these big ragged motor unit potentials and sometimes even reduced recruitment is apparent but if you take care to get minimal activation you're more likely to pick up those small motor unit potentials in the background in the muscles that do have mixed pop populations and lastly inclusion body myositis does often present with slowly progressive weakness that is often asymmetric especially earlier on and that's the end of this teachable moment.